Hello. Leslie Schreiner here. I've got a shaggy girl and I'm going to use her to help to teach about getting started with hand stripping your schnauzer. So when people especially are first learning how to do this, the number one question is, where do I start? This is a lot of hair to pull off. And it's easy to bite off more than you can chew. And then find yourself kind of deep in the weeds and not know where to go. So the first thing I'm going to teach you is it's important to know that different parts of the coat of the jacket grow at different, at different rates. This center section grows the slowest, and within that, the lower you go on the ribs, the slower it grows also. The next slowest area to grow, or the next fastest, depending on how you look at it, is the neck and the shoulders and the rear quarters. And finally, the part that grows the fastest is the head and the tail. So, next really important piece of information when you're trying to decide where to start and how to approach the grooming is whatever you do, make sure you are symmetrical about it. So, don't start like here and make a hole and then decide I can't do anymore and then come back two weeks later and then start somewhere else and you'll end up with a patchwork. So, Take the information about where the hair grows the slowest and where the hair grows the fastest and we'll make a game plan from that. If I don't have any, if I don't have enough time to do anything but just really quote unquote get started, I'm going to do the tail and the head first because they grow the fastest and so they need work the most often and it's a good place to get started on what we call rotating the coat, which is basically trying to pick a little bit at a time so you can maintain a consistent appearance. Um, you might be doing that for a show or you might have a dog with a nice coat and you just want to keep it in a consistent appearance. Um, so I start with a little bit of uh, ear powder to help me grip the hair. And she's, uh, she's in season a little bit, so. If there's any grips anywhere, don't be alarmed. So I'm using a stone. Uh, I might use my fingers. Her coat is hard, but a little bit fine. So I wanna be careful um, about breakage. Fine coats are a little more apt to break than, um, than thick shaft of hair, but they're gonna be a little less easy to break than a soft coat. So. I've done the clipper work, roughed in already, just to kind of make some headway. And ideally, I don't want to strip everything down to the skin if there's another layer, because the whole thing about rolling the coat or getting started with stripping is you're trying to create layers. That's the key to keeping a consistent appearance. Now, I've got pretty much the hard coat stripped off the tail here, and then there's this bit of soft hair and let's see there's a little bit of hard coat on the other side of that so i'm gripping it with the stone not taking too much at a time you want to grip the tips and pull a little less um if you try if you're having trouble pulling the hair or your dog is complaining a lot you're probably trying to take too much hair at a time or you're trying to take it too fast. So slow down and take a little less hair at a time and they won't complain so much. Okay, so I've stripped the hard coat off the tail. This little plume is gonna, gonna make me crazy. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my thinning shears to um, at least rough trim that off. So I have to keep looking at it and come back to it. And then the next part is I'm going to strip some on the head. 
She has a ton of hair on her head. Again, I'm gonna put a little ear powder on it because it makes it grippier. Um, and if I strip her head completely, then there won't be any color underneath and it'll all come back in at the same time. So a good approach is to take what's the longest. There are some layers here. There's some definitely some hair that's longer and I'm just gonna lift it up, take the longest hair, pluck that. And that's gonna leave a layer that's a little bit shaggy, but in another two weeks or so, if I go back two to four weeks and then pluck that layer and plan to work the head anywhere from two to four weeks is good. That'll keep consistent coat, consistent layers on the head. And a really good thing for you to do is to get a calendar, like a, a little small one from the drugstore or something like that, that you use just to keep track of the timing of your grooming. Grooming is, uh, stripping a dog is a bit of a puzzle in time, and it does matter what areas you work and what how often you do it. And like I said, these areas in the middle grow the slowest, in the head, the tail grows the fastest. So the areas that grow the fastest, you have to work a little more often. And the other areas, not as much. You can also, if um, it takes a while to develop the hand strength to strip easily. So if you start doing it and at first you're like, wow, this is really hard and my hand is really tired. Um, don't be surprised. Uh, that's part of why I use the, the powder. So that makes it easier for me to grip the hair so I don't have to pinch with my hands quite as hard. That's why something like um, a stone is, is good to help you grip. Especially on the head, I'd like to avoid using a uh, conventional stripping knife unless I'm more experienced because it's much more likely to cut the hair and it will make the hair shorter and you might think you're stripping, but you will not ultimately see that nice salt and pepper color coming out on the head. And that's your sign. If, if the head grows back in a solid color, a solid uh, dark or light gray, that's your, your sign that you broke coat by accident when you didn't mean to. So just plucking at this a little. And for people with more experience, I'm gonna throw something out there too which is I recently, about a month ago, started to develop a repetitive motion um, injury in my thumb. I have a little trigger finger in my thumb right now. And so I'm finding that if I grip my tools in a different place, it's not as painful and I, it swells less. I mean, grooming's what I do, so I can't just stop. I, I, so I take care of myself, but I can't just stop. So. What I used to do was push the tool this way with the end of my thumb. What I'm having to adapt to now is to put the pressure more on, on the joint itself and pull maybe a little bit on the outside of the joint. So uh, if you haven't experienced repetitive motion uh, injury from stripping, then you might wanna start thinking about how can you leverage the tool and what you're doing so that you're actually putting the least pressure? It turns out it's, it's in this area that the injury is. So when I put pressure this way, this actually hurts this part of my thumb the most. So if I am working this way, there's less uh, leverage because my thumb isn't bent and the, the force is distributed more evenly. So had anyone ever known to teach me that in the past, I think I would have tried to learn from the beginning to strip more with a flat thumb instead of from my, the tip of my thumb. So I'm just having to relearn 
a new way in order so I can keep going. But um, some of you more experienced people, that may be something you encounter in the future. And for some of you less experienced people, it might be um, a good way to go ahead and start learning now. Um, because those of us who've been doing it for longer and those of us who are just starting to do it are the most likely to get um, that kind of repetitive motion injury, us, us long timers because of, um, you know, how many times have I made a pull like this over my life? How many millions, literally, how many million times have I pulled this hair? And for the newer people, their hand strength isn't as, as strong, so they're more likely to uh, overwork the, the joints and get some inflammation. Okay, so we've pulled some hair on the head. I pulled the longest stuff. Now I'm just gonna pull a little bit more stuff. Still a little bit shaggy, but in two to four weeks, if I pull that off, what what's now, what then is the longest, and I see there is a little bit of a layer right at the skin. Then I'll start getting a really nice headpiece in. So anytime you work the coat, start with the tail, start with the head, and that way, even if everything else gets a little shaggy for whatever reason, if you keep the head and the tail stripped and your clipper work done, your dog will always look maintained, which is important sometimes with a stripped dog, God forbid your dog gets out, but if they're in a longer stripped coat and you haven't done their clipper work for a while, the average person on the street or the average animal control person or person at a shelter may have difficulty recognizing that your dog is as well maintained as it really is. So I keep up the head and the clipper work and the tail and the rear clipper work so that there's, they may look at it and go, I don't understand this grooming at all, but they can look at it and identify that the dog has had recent grooming. Okay, so that took me a, a few minutes. It used to take me to strip this whole dog out when I first started out would probably have taken me about five hours. Now, if I just went to it, I could probably do it in an hour and a half. Um, but when you're first starting out, again, that's kind of where I'm, I'm headed with this video you are going to need to take breaks. The dog's going to need to take breaks, whatever. So given that I might have to take a break, I am going to focus on, again, symmetry and what grows. I've done what grows fastest. Now I'm going to start with what grows the slowest. And that's this center section, pretty much from the shoulders down and then from the forward of the hips. That's roughly the center section. And it's tempting to just start at the top <laughs> because that's easy to reach. But that grows faster than this. And especially if you make headway on this section, but then you get tired and you say, oh, I'll take it up again next week or whatever. And then something happens and maybe it's a week later, or a week later. And you finally get this part stripped out. Well, now this part has a head start of a couple of weeks. And it's gonna grow in funny. And then in two months, three months, you're gonna look at it and you're gonna be like, why does it look this? Why is it long on top, but still short here? And where, what do I do with that? So just save yourself the frustration and start pulling down here about where the skirt's gonna be. And again, I'm using the stone I'm going to grip the hair just in front of where I'm pulling. And that makes it not pull the skin so much. So it's a little more comfortable for the dog. And I'm going to be conservative. And at first I'm going to, as I'm doing this line across here, I'm going to make it a little higher than I think it needs to be. So that if I'm wrong, um, I at least don't make it too low because it's, it takes a long time to grow skirt back in. So I'd rather err on the side of making my line too high. I can always make it lower later, but if I make my line too low in the beginning, I can't put the hair back and raise it up again. 
Now this dog's pretty good for this demonstration because her hair strips really easily. And like I said, it's a little finer, so it's not as heavy and thick as some coats are. So it makes a good, a good demo. She's pretty novice to being stripped. So we got some stress panting going on. I'll keep an eye on that and be mindful of that in terms of giving her breaks. Okay, so here's here's the first line I put in. This will, this will take the longest to grow back in. And so I've stripped it first to give it, to give it a head start. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And there's uh, a number of different ways to hold. As you can see, I sit and I kneel and I do all different kind of positions and postures to make, maintain my comfort while I'm stripping. Um, we don't all have that option. I can't, I can't sit on my, my uh, show grooming table nearly as well as I can this heavy duty hydraulic table at my grooming shop, but um, still getting a stool or a chair so that you, you know, obviously posture is an issue when you work and we have a tendency to hunch over and get close to what we're looking at, we're doing, especially if we're getting a little nearsighted. And that's real bad for your posture and your back is going to be sad and not thank you. And so think about your posture while you're thinking about where your thumb is on the, on the tools. And it's another reason to go slow in the beginning. It's not about speed. It's not, a, it's certainly not about, okay, I just need to get this done and move on. It's really for the dog, if they're new at it, and for you, if you're new at it, part of this experience is relationship building, you know, and not being too fussy. Not letting them be too fussy either. Kind of a balancing act. And you can't see it in the mirror because she's standing there, but I've, I've basically done the same thing on the other side. I got this part started. Okay, so now let's say I took a break or, you know, I this might take somebody who's new at this like an hour, 45 minutes, something they may be done for the time being. Then you'd want to come back to it Certainly within a week, ideally within a day or the same day. And then you're going to do the same thing. You're going to say, okay, I'm from here to here to make sure that I have enough time and enough strength and enough energy to be symmetrical on both sides and take into account the speed the hair grows. I'm going to do another section, another third right about here on both sides. Saving the very top to the end of the center section. Now, one of the things that we do when we're stripping a dog that's all grown out like this, say we're getting ready to show, then we might well groom in what's called we do section stripping and that's basically what i'm doing here is i'm i'm doing the first section of section stripping like i said it's this middle piece all the way around because that's what um, grows the slowest so that's what we have to do first so that there's a there's a time in two to three and a half months, depending on how fast the individual dog's coat grows, where it's all consistently the same length. Here, 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 and the head. So I find that typically, and there's a range, but typically once you pull the coat, then the new hair that grows in that hair shaft will break the surface of the skin 
in six to eight weeks. I've had a few coats that grew faster than that. I've had some that grow slower. It varies from line to line. So my experience might not be the same as someone else's. Um, you know, I, I tend to work with many of the same lines. I get some variations, but I'm here in Virginia on the East Coast, so I mostly see and work on East Coast dogs. So I don't really know the genetics of the coats of the West Coast dogs or um, too much. I know some of the European lines, coats, because they're in the behind the dogs I have too. So, okay, that's second. Second third of the first section. And like I said, super important. I really, I can't overstate it. Be symmetrical, be symmetrical. Don't pull a little bit in one place and a little bit somewhere else. Um, when it starts growing out in two, three months, it, it's gonna look like a patchwork quilt and you're just not gonna know what, what you wanna do about that. Okay, I went pretty quick. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the rest of this section. Let's say I took a break again and now this is day three. Uh, if you wanna take your time at it or you're slow going in the beginning. Experience helps me go faster, helps me to really know which hair I wanna grab. But in slow motion, basically what I'm doing is I'm lifting hair, I go towards the dog's head, I lift hair, then I grab what's easily accessible and pull back toward the tail. Reach forward to lift some hair, grab it, pull back toward the tail. That's what I'm, it looks like I'm just grabbing hair and pulling, but every stroke I'm, I'm actually brushing forward with my thumb a little bit just to lift some hair and make it easier to grab a smaller or more manageable amount of hair to pull. And normally I would grip the, the skin right in front of the hair, but if I do that, then there's no chance of you being able to see. I'm, try I'm hoping that you can see, I'm hoping I'm not blocking the view too much with my arm. Yeah, I'm really grateful that her coat pulls so easily. I feel that um, how easily the coat pulls from the skin is an important consideration for coat quality. Normally we talk about the hardness of the coat and the thickness of the hair shaft as the, the two primary genetic components of the coat. But having stripped a lot of dogs in a lot of years, I am always so happy when it's a coat that pulls easily. Usually, but not always, the harder coats pull easier. Not always. And softer coats are harder to pull. That's part of why there's a point where it's just not worth it to bother stripping a soft coat. Keep, keep pulling. And I'm working in a pretty uh, systematic fashion. Again, I'm not jumping around. I'm, I'm really trying to work one place and slowly move into the next area. Slowly move into the next area. Maybe I can, when there's, it's, when there's not a whole lot of coat in the area that I'm pulling, that's when maybe I, I pull a little faster because I'm barely pulling any, any hairs so I can pull faster. But the goal is not to do it faster. The goal is to do it consistently and without breaking the coat and without frustrating yourself or the dog too much. It just takes patience. You know, if I wasn't doing the video, I'd have music on in the background. Something to just, Occupy the part of my mind that is like 
I'd be doing something. I need to be doing something faster, faster. But the dog doesn't need it to be faster. And again, the place to make this easier to strip is if you grip the, the skin literally right in front of where you're pulling. Because I'm doing it in this more awkward way, I can feel it in my back. So that's what reminds me to, to mention that the correct way is this. It's just if I do that, you can't see. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to do the rest of um, this section on the other side. I'm right-handed, obviously, um, so I find this side is more tiring and harder to do, so I have taught myself to do this side first. That way, when I get over to this side and I'm tired and part of me is going, ugh, how much of there is this still to do, it's easier for me to pull this side, so it's just easier to get through it. if I. If I do this side first and then I'm like, oh, I'm tired, and then I start this side, then I'm like, oh, now I have, to, I have all the hardest part to do left. So, um, so I, that's why I start on the left-hand side. You're doing a good job, honey. You're a good girl. This is actually the first time she's ever been stripped, so she's doing really, really well. One of the ways that you can tell that you're starting to get tired mentally is it gets harder to be systematic. And if you catch yourself moving from one area to another before you're actually done with the area that you're on, that's a, a red flag that uh, you might need to take a break soon. Or if you find that you're getting impatient with the dog or the dog is getting too impatient with you, Okay, now I've pulled the same section on the other side as I have over here. Now I'm gonna add something, which is if I, when I'm getting a dog ready to show and I'm doing this center section, I'm also going to go ahead and strip a triangle up into the neck like this, because a lot of, a lot of dogs have a kind of a straight shoulder. She has a pretty nice shoulder. There's there's no perfect shoulders. I you know ideally be a little farther back, but um, so if you strip this this section right here when you do the the shoulders, the problem with that is that you are going to um, have a really hard angle at the neck. And the long and, and the back and when we have a more upright shoulder it um it makes the head the neck i mean look shorter and if you have a hard a hard um you know angle right here it makes the neck look really short and makes the back look longer and we don't want that so um, so that means in order, to, in the finished product three months from now when all this grows in for a show coat, I'm going to want the hair that's right here to be a little longer. So that means I need to strip it a little earlier. And I don't want to strip all of it because I do want some layering to come in. I want it to layer a bit so that... Um, it's always the most frustrating year at like 11 points, 10 or 11 points or something like that. And the dog starts to go out of coat. And then if you, if you pull down the stuff right, right here, that's getting too long, then you, you put exactly that angle in there that I was talking about. So if you have some hair that you can leave for when you complete this section, then that'll help. 
So we've basically done the first section. We've done the head, we've done the tail, and we've done the middle section on both sides. Now, this is an ideal stopping point, and if we were doing section stripping to get ready for a show coat, then I would leave it like this for about three weeks before I would strip the neck and strip the shoulders and strip the rear. And that way, these areas, which grow faster, have to spend a little time catching up with this area. I give this area a head start so that in three months or so, when, when it should all be a nice length for showing, in three months or so, it'll be consistent here and here and here. And then I'll be rotating the head and the tail to keep a nice look for that. So that's the first section. And keep going. <laughs> 